Hello everybody, this is Manuel at Manuel Martel Photography and welcome to another Luminar tutorial. Today I would like to show you how to create this single image in Luminar. I will uh, show you how I do it and hopefully you'll learn a few things in the process. And we're going to start with this image. So we're going to right click and send this image edit in Luminar. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with uh, different layers and different filters and hopefully uh, I'll be able to show you a few tools as well. And I'll just try to, you know, I'll just show you how I work. And uh, the first thing I want me to do is I clean my workspace and I rename my layer. Uh, I'll rename this one the base layer. Here we go. Okay, so here we are. We're going to look at this image first. Um, there's a lot of dust particles in the sky. It is crooked. Uh, it's lacking in colors and it is quite dark on the beach in the tree line. So those are the things we get to kind of focus on. When I normally look at an image, I'm trying to find uh, the obvious and then I work on that. So the first, no the first thing I normally work on is cleaning the image and realigning the image and then I will build my coloring and, and so forth afterwards. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the clone stand tool to clean the sky. Um, it's a great little tool that uh, it's very handy to have. Uh, use the hand. I zoomed in, and I'm gonna use the hand just to move my for, uh, my image around. Right? They ask me to click to set the source. So if you guys are not too sure what Clone Stamp tool uh, does, uh, it will uh, replace an area with some pixel that you're taking next to it. So I'm gonna zoom one notch in. I'm gonna use the hand again to move. Okay. So you want to make your brush size, I'm going to start with this U shape, you want to make your brush size more or less the same size as what you want to change here. And the source is, you're going to click close to what you want to change, and then I'm going to click here. What's going to happen is now that little circle with the plus in it, it is where uh, the pixel will be taken from to replace the U. There we go. See, it did a pretty good job. So I can keep going around. And then if I find it doing a great job, I gotta keep going. And sometimes you have to uh, do a little bit more work, but if it works, it works. I'm doing a very quick job. See that circle here? It's a little, not that great. So you can change your opacity down maybe to 20% and try to blend that a little bit better. So if you press the Alt Option key, you get a sample somewhere else in the image. So then by doing that, you can move around and then blend things from one area to the other and then see it does a pretty good job. So this is now me how I work with this clone stamp tool. I try with a very high opacity like 100% to 90% or whatever. I come around and I, and I sample my pixel close to my area and I just paint into it. And it does a pretty pretty darn good job most of the time. So I'm going to do that very quickly here, just for the sake of keeping this tutorial uh, short. But just secret is to come around and then sample different area into your image. Again, I kind of make a little bit of smudge there and then just choose somewhere a little lighter in the picture and come and fix it this way. And then it should be breaking pretty good. And then, uh, yeah, just mess around till you find that you fix the damage you created. This is somewhat of a destructive way, but don't you worry, because Luminar will create a new layer with uh, with this clone, uh, clone and, and, and stamp. So we're gonna readjust the opacity to 90%, come around, play simple from there. Excellent. So we're just gonna move around here, and then I'll, again, I'm doing that very quickly. Take your time. I'm just trying to keep this video a little short. So I'm just going to quickly clean the sky. And then it's not a fantastic job, but it will do the trick for what we're trying to do here. Okay, so if I were to zoom out, it looks very good. I cleaned most of the stuff. You can't really tell. So we're going to press apply to apply this clone stamp tool. So a great, this is a great tool. I just love the clone stamp tool. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to rotate uh, this picture a bit and then uh, we're going to crop it. So we're going to use a crop tool. And then if you go on the side here, you can actually move that around until you find that you 
have a good horizon line. Everything's very good. I'm going to press apply. And here we go. We get a clone stamp layer. And it's been um, aligned. If you look at the before and the after, you can see we get all the things in the sky. Now it is clean. At this point, you can choose to work to whatever you feel like. Um, why don't we start with the sky? We're going to add a new adjustment layer. So the first thing I work when there's clouds is I'm going to go around here, choose the highlights and the shadows. So the highlights, uh, I, by the way, I'm only concentrating on the sky here. I don't care much what's happening else in the photo. So we, the highlights, if you bring that down, you can tell that it actually do a pretty good job at adding some definition in the sky as well as bring a little bit more cutter. So we're gonna bring that down to maybe minus uh, 50. And then the shadows, as far as you slide that, the clouds doesn't get affected too much. It's more like the rest of the scene. So, but I, I don't really care again about the rest of the scene at this moment. So we're gonna add another filter to this. And why don't we go with a saturation filter. So saturation and vibrance. And then we're gonna try to add a little bit more color in the sky. So we're gonna saturate the sky maybe to 15 a little bit more vibrance, maybe, I don't know, around 10. So if you want to take a look, the before and after, if you want to, there's that little orange circle you can press into and you can add it or subtract it. And I think this is good. It really maybe go around 20%. Is it too much? Uh, maybe it's a little bit more. So we're going to go around maybe 17. Okay. So we're going to rename this one my sky layer. And then after that, because I don't really want all this to be affected to the rest of the image, I'm going to go choose my brush here. So my brush by default come at 50% opacity, so I'm going to put that to 100%. My softness, I never leave that 100% myself. I'll go work around 50% or something like that, and I'll crank the brush size a little bigger. So I'm going to make sure that I have the filled uh, circle here, which means I'm going to add. So now I don't have any uh, layer, uh, sorry, mask on this layer, but as soon as I click on it, see there's a black mask that just appear there. So wherever I use the brush, you're gonna see like it turns white, and then white reveal, black will will uh, hide, will conceal. So you gotta keep that in mind. If you have a white uh, mask, it revealed the change we made. A black mask will hide everything. So. I'm pretty happy with this. So I get the ocean there. Do I want the ocean to have that? Yeah, it's a good, it's a good color for the ocean too. So let's just bring that uh, size brush a little smaller here. And I'm gonna come around here and it's gonna brush that in. I really like the reflection of the actual uh, sky on the ocean here. I don't necessarily want the trees and everything, but you can tell my uh, mask looks good. So I really like what I did with the sky. So I'm gonna add a new layer now because I'm done with the sky. And I'm gonna work on something different, like a layer for whatever you work on. So let's work on the tree line. So we need that to be a little brighter. Um, let's go brightness and contrast. So we can actually brighten everything here. Uh, brightness and contrast. Again, don't care too much about what's happening else in the image. Um, maybe a little bit brightness and lower the contrast maybe a little bit and why don't we add a uh, highlights and shadows just to play around with shadows a little bit here we go I really like the look of it so we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna use our brush again uh, let's bring the size uh, well, down again into the plus and then all we're gonna do is get a brush the tree line here and then by default, what's going to happen is you're going to have like a little bit of a, a line in the sky here and the tree line, sorry. So you don't necessarily want um, your tree line to be that dark. So you can zoom in a bit and then you're going to go around here and reveal the mask on the edge. If you want to zoom a little bit more, change your brush size. So editing, post-processing, stuff like that, you really want to change your brush size constantly and zoom in if you need to so if you think that's a little too dark here what you can do is make your brush very soft change your opacity a little bit make it a little bit bigger uh, really soft I meant and then what you're gonna do is just gonna try to spill a little bit in the sky here 
and then I just click a little bit in there. So what's going to happen here is the uh, because it's super soft, it's going to be uh, a bit like faded going to the sky, so it won't be like a sharp line and anything dramatic. So I really like that. And while I'm at it, I'm going to try to brighten a bit of that uh, that water movement there, actually, in the ocean. I kind of kind of like this. Here we go, just like that. So if you guys think it's a little too much, you can always change the opacity of your layer down. So I kind of like it around maybe 80% right now. Let's bring it 100% and we'll look at it later. I'm going to press back my hand just so I can actually uh, move things around. Oh, see now, I because I was zoomed in, I forgot this part of the image. So I'm going to go back to the brush, opacity 100%, make my brush bigger, and then I'm just going to brush that back in. Here we go. It is better this way. So I kind of more or less have the inverse uh, mass as you can tell, right? Okay, so this is our layer. I'm gonna call that brightness. image a little brighter now. Okay, so now that I've dealt with my brightness, I'm going to deal with my tree light. I want it to be a little bit more colorful, and there's a nice little filters for that. So I'm going to add a new layer because I'm working on something different. Every time I work something different, I add a new layer, and there's a foliage enhancer. And then we're going to add the amount a little bit. Now I'm going to go overboard a bit, show you guys, see how the color in the trees change a whole lot, and the who will uh, change the color a little bit. I want it like maybe a little green. And then I'll bring a little bit more color to it. So the before and the after. It only changed the green part, right? So it didn't change much. Just added up a little bit more dimension to my trees. So I kind of, kind of really like it. So we're gonna call this one tree. So people might want to work on one thing, and but as soon as you create mass, it's kind of hard to. Uh, work in the all around of your picture. That's why I, I attempt to do layers for every time I'm trying to, every things I'm trying to change. It's easier to uh, work, and then you can come back easy afterwards too to whatever change you make. Okay, and then we're gonna do another layer, and I'm gonna get add uh, maybe a little clarity to our rocks, a little bit more um, like dimension to our rocks. So the clarity. Look at the. I'll zoom in a little bit. So you guys can take a look here. We're gonna use the hand, and then you can tell the difference. It have a little sharpness to our rocks, right? Just it, they pop just a little bit better that way. A bit more contrast. So we're gonna keep that around 70%, and then we're gonna zoom out. And with our brush, we only gonna brush the beach. So another great feature is I really like how. Actually, why don't we take the actual boats as well? So we're gonna zoom in just a touch, and then I'm just gonna add the boats to uh, to this mask as well. You know, just add a little bit of definitions to those boats on the beach there. A little bit more, a little clarity, a little bit more clear, a little more contrast, a little shack there. There we go. I love this little shack there as well. They'll pop just that much better. Here we go. So that's going to be my clarity. Okay. So probably the last thing I want to do here is uh, add a little vignette and then add a little soft glow to this image. So we're going to go and again, because I know what I'm doing, uh, what I want to do, I should say, I'm going to go to soft glow. And then, get oh, could tell it. Let me work on the sky here. More anything else? Uh, okay, we gotta delete this. It's not working at the soft focus. We gotta try that instead. See now the soft focus worked great. So we're gonna type number two because I don't want to brighten the picture so much. Just a little bit. Maybe just like that. There we go, just 10%. And if you find that you took too much from the trees, again, you can add a brush and change that. But I'm pretty happy how it is. And I'm gonna add a vignette. 
and then the vignette I like to go way overboard and then choose the size we're gonna make that one a little less round we're gonna not feather a whole lot inner brightness not necessarily and then uh, just gonna make this here we go All right, inner brightness yeah brighten pretty good I like that bright this part okay so this is pretty much uh, what's called is the final touch and here it is so we create a bunch of layers as you can tell uh, I have very distinct layers if you want to see the before and after you can press the layer the base layer the, and then our last one then you'll see the difference so this is how I normally work when I work with one photo I can uh, easily do uh, all these things by adding layers and I have specific filters to those layers so one layer per things that I want to do in, in Luminar. So I'm going to press apply and then it will be applied to uh, my image and then it will be sent back to Lightroom. So hopefully you guys learn a few tips. Uh, at least uh, you may, you, you probably were curious about a few tools and how to use them. Well, maybe uh, that helped you. So let's have a look in the full. So that's what we did. And this is what I did previously so you can tell it's a little different I kind of almost like what we've done better and then we start with this image a big 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 difference obviously between this and that right the final product so this is how I work with uh, Luminar um, another great way that I work with it at the moment is I created created my own preset so what I mean by that is I'll have uh, this image for example that I took is one of the little volcano in Bali that we hiked and then I created this preset and look at the difference in the definition the color and the clouds so basically because I know that I work with a lot of pictures that have clouds and green in it so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go around and I get edit into Luminar and I created a certain preset so um, with that preset it's very easy to go to a photo like this and just apply it to it and it works very good so you can do your own filters and create your own preset that's what I really like about Luminar as well so I gotta bring my preset panel here I am into the user uh, here preset panel and I have this one I did the green cloudy boost so I click on it and then right away I've got this this uh, nice look to my image so I have my filters and these are the filters that I use to do uh, this specific look. So now I use this uh, filter on several images so far and I really like the look of it. So I save this, uh, uh, all those filters into a preset. So the way to do that, you go to the, the top bar here into filters and then you create a preset and then you name it whatever you want and then it will appear here. So I have the sunny ocean day, which is not too far from the green and cloudy boost but you can tell the difference the green and cloudy boost I have a little bit more uh, boost into my greens right versus versus my sunny ocean day and I have another one here the sunset soft color enhancer that I did which doesn't work at all with this photo so depend really uh, you know what you do um, you have certain presets so that's basically my presets and the way I work with uh, with Luminar from Lightroom so I did this photo with the preset and then this photo as well with the preset as well as these ones. Okay, so hopefully uh, this tutorial was handy for you guys. If you have any comments, any questions, feel free to leave them uh, in my comment sections or send me an email. If you want me to work on something different, just let me know and I will try to produce a video tutorial as soon as I can. Thanks for watching again guys and we'll see you next time.